The Monkey's Paw by W. W. Jacobs, dramatized by Mara Rockliffe. The setting, the White family's home in a newly developed English suburb around 1920. Scene one, a dark and stormy winter night. The sound of heavy rain can be heard and an occasional thunderclap. The White's living room is cozy and bright. Mr. White and Hermione play chess while Mrs. White knits by the fire. Hermione is winning. Not looking too good for you, is it, Dad? Could you please be quiet? I'm trying to concentrate. Listen to that wind howling out there. I hear it. Oh, she won't show up in a storm like this, I bet. Maybe, maybe not. <gasps> Check. Mr. White reaches for a chess piece. <gasps> Mate! Mr. White pulls his hand back. That's what I can't stand about living out in the middle of nowhere like this. Every time it rains, the road gets flooded and no one can get out here. And what do those politicians in town do about it? Nothing! I suppose our three votes don't count. Now, never mind, dear. Maybe you'll win the next game. Mr. White looks up sharply and sees Mrs. White and Hermione smiling at him in amusement. His annoyance fades and he smiles guiltily. A gate bangs and the heavy footsteps are heard approaching the door. Sounds like she made it after all. Mr. White goes out to the door and greets the widow of his friend, Sergeant Major Morris. She comes in and begins wiping her feet and shaking out her umbrella. Mother, you remember the Sergeant Major I told you about. Uh, this is his wife, Mrs. Morris. Mrs. Morris, my wife, and my daughter, Hermione. They shake hands, and the three older people sit down while Hermione goes to fix tea. Glad you made it. We didn't know if you'd come out in this storm. Storm? This little shower? Oh. Well, you wouldn't think much of this if you'd ever been held up in Bombay during their monsoon season. Now, there are some storms, let me tell you. Did you live in India a long time, Mrs. Morris? Uh, 21 years they've been gone. Uh, when Sergeant Major joined up with the Army, uh, he wasn't a day older than Hermione, uh, and neither was I for that matter. We started out in the warehouse together. Mm. Well, time flies. Mm, time flies. Hermione enters bringing the tea. I'd like to go to India, see the old temples, maybe catch one of those holy men performing miracles. Mm, you're better off here. But you must have all kinds of great stories to tell. The places you saw, the people you met. Oh, does she ever. Uh, what was that story you started to tell me the other day, Mrs. Morris, uh, about a monkey's paw or something? Nothing, really. Nothing worth hearing. A monkey's paw? Well, it's just a bit of well, what you might call magic, I guess. Magic? The Whites look at Mrs. Morris with interest. <laughs> well, it... It, <clears throat> it it's just looks it's just like a little paw that's all dried up. She pulls a mummified monkey's paw out of her pocket and holds it out. Mrs. White draws back in horror, but Hermione takes the paw and looks at it curiously. So what's so special about it? Mr. White takes the paw from Hermione and examines it, then puts it down on the table. Well, it, it had a spell put on it by an old holy man. He wanted to show that fate ruled people's lives and that anyone who tried to interfere with fate would be sorry. He put a magic spell on the paw so that three people could each have three wishes from it. Well, why don't you wish on it then? I have. And did you really have your three wishes granted? I did. And has anyone else wished on it? The first owner had three wishes, but yes, I don't know what the first two were, but the third was for death. That's how I got the paw. If you had your three wishes, that things no 
good to you now, then, Mrs. Morris, uh, what do you keep it for? <laughs> no good reason, I guess. I did have some idea of selling it, but I don't think I will. It's caused enough trouble already. Besides, no one will buy it. Some people think it's just a fairy tale. And the ones who do think anything of it want to try it first and pay me afterward. If you could have three, another three wishes, would you use them? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. She takes the paw, dangles it between her finger and thumb, and then suddenly throws it into the fire. Hey! Mr. White jumps up and grabs the paw out of the fire before it starts to burn. Better let it burn. If you don't want it, Mrs. Morris, give it to me. I won't. I threw it on the fire. If you keep it, don't blame me for what happens. If you're smart, you'll throw it back on the fire. Mr. White shakes his head and looks closely at the paw. How do you do it? Um, hold it in your right hand and wish out loud. But I'm warning you, you won't like the consequences. Sounds like the Arabian Nights. Why don't you wish for a few extra pair of hands for me? Mrs. White gets up to set the table for supper. Mr. White starts to raise his arm and Mrs. Morris, alarmed, jumps forward to stop him. The three Whites laugh. <laughs> <laughs> if you must wish, for heaven's sakes, wish for something sensible. But I don't want to be here to see it. The four sit down and eat supper. The monkey's paw, forgotten for the moment. The whites listen to more of the Morris's adventures. After supper, Mrs. Morris rises. Mr. White accompanies her to the door and they say their goodbyes. Mr. White returns to the fireside and sits down. Well, Mrs. Morris is quite a storyteller. For a moment, there she almost had me believing that that one about the monkey's paw. Did you give that disgusting thing back to her? I tried to, but she wouldn't take it. And she told me again to get rid of it. <gasps> get rid of it and give up our chance to be rich and famous and happy? Wish to be an emperor, Dad, to start off with. Then Mom can't boss you around. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Mr. White takes the paw from his pocket and looks at it doubtfully. I don't know what to wish for, and that's a fact. It seems to me I've got all I want already. You'd like to pay off the mortgage, though, wouldn't you? Well, wish for 200 pounds, then. That'll do it. Oh, this is ridiculous. <clears throat> no harm trying, though, I suppose. He holds up the paw as Hermione taps a drum roll on the table with her hands. I wish for 200 pounds. Hermione finishes with a dramatic flourish. Mr. White cries out, ah! shuddering, and drops the paw. His wife and daughter run toward him. It moved. When I wished it, it twisted in my hand like a snake. Well, I don't see the money, and I bet I never will. She picks up the paw and puts it on the table. You must have imagined it. I felt it move. Never mind, though. I'm, I'm all right. They sit down by the fire. A depressing silence settles over them. The howling of the wind grows louder. A door bangs, startling them all. Hermione laughs. <laughs> I don't know why we listen to that nonsense. How could wishes be granted in real life? And if they could, how could 200 pounds hurt you anyway? It could drop on his head from the sky. Well, Mrs. Morris said the things happened so naturally that you might think it was coincidence. <laughs> well, I've had enough of magic and fate and monkey's paws for one night. It's time for bed. Well, good night then. You'll probably find the money tied up in a big bag in the middle of your bed, Dad, and some horrible creature squatting up on top of the dresser watching you as you pocket your ill-gotten gains. Scene two, the next afternoon. The sun shines into the living room. 
Mr. and Mrs. White are drinking tea and sorting through the day's mail. The paw lies on a shelf, ignored. Well, plenty of bills so far, but no check for 200 pounds. I suppose Hermione will have more of her funny remarks for you when she gets home from the factory. I'm sure she will. But that thing moved in my hand. I'd swear to that. Oh, dear, you thought it did. It did. There was no thought about it. I just... What is it? Mrs. White is looking past him, out the window. There's there's somebody outside, a woman in a business suit. I've never seen her before. She's acting very strange, as if she can't decide whether to open the gate or not. Oh, here she comes, up the path now. There is a knock at the door, and Mrs. White goes to let the stranger in. Inside, the stranger stands silently for a moment, looking uncomfortable. I... I was asked to come see you. I come from Ma and Megan's. Is there anything wrong? Has something happened to Hermione? What is it? What is it? Now, now, calm down. No point jumping to conclusions. I'm sure our visitor hasn't brought us any bad news. I'm sorry. Is she hurt? Badly hurt. But she's not in any pain. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness for that. Thank. She breaks off. Suddenly, suddenly understanding, and stares at the stranger in growing horror. The stranger looks at the floor. Mrs. White turns to her husband and takes his hand. There is a long pause. She was caught in the machinery. Caught in the machinery, yes. He squeezes his wife's hand and stares blankly out the window then turns to the stranger. She was our only child, you know. It, it is hard. <clears throat> the company wants me to convey their sincere sympathy with you in your great loss. I hope you understand that I'm just doing my job. I'm supposed to tell you that Ma and Megan's disclaim all responsibility. They admit no liability, but in consideration of your daughter's work, they would like to give you a certain sum as compensation. A certain sum? How much? 200 pounds. Mrs. White screams. Oh! Mr. White holds out his hands and falls to the floor in a faint. Scene three. Nighttime, a week and a half later. Mrs. White stands in the doorway weeping as she looks out into the darkness. Mr. White comes downstairs. He goes to her and closes the door and then puts his arms around her. Come back to bed. It's cold out there tonight. It is colder for my daughter. She sobs. Suddenly she straightens and turns, <gasps> clutching her husband's arms. Oh, the paw, the monkey's paw. What? Where? I want it. You didn't get rid of it, did you? It's upstairs, I think. Why? Oh, ha. I only just thought of it. Why, why didn't I think of it before? Why didn't you think of it? Think of what? The other two wishes. We have only had one. Wasn't that enough? No. We'll have one more. Go get it down and wish our daughter alive again. You're insane. I want my daughter back. I want to see my daughter. You don't know what you're saying. We had the first wish granted. Why not the second? It was a coincidence. Go and get it and wish. Mr. White faces her and takes her by the arms. She's been dead ten days. And besides, I didn't want to tell you this, but I could only recognize her by her clothes. She was mangled in the machinery. If she was too terrible for you to see then, how would it be now? Bring her back. Do you think I would fear my own daughter? Mr. White goes slowly upstairs, followed by his wife. He takes the paw and stares at it. Wish. It is foolish and wicked. Wish. I wish my daughter alive again. He drops the paw and sinks trembling into a chair. Mrs. White runs to the window and stands looking out. The clock ticks. 
A stair creaks. Mrs. White comes and sits by her husband. Finally, a quiet knock is heard. Mrs. White jumps up. What's that? A mouse. It's just a mouse in the wall. Another knock, louder this time. It's, it's Hermione. It's, it's our daughter. She starts toward the stairs, but Mr. White grabs her by the arm. What are you going to do? Hermione, what are you holding me for? Let me go so I can open the door. Don't let it in. How can you be afraid of your own daughter? Let me go. The knocking is louder and louder. She breaks free and runs down to the door. I'm here, Hermione, I'm right here. As she struggles with the lock, Mr. White falls to his knees. He picks up the monkey's paw from the floor and holds it up in his right hand. His lips move, but we can't hear him over the thunderous knocking. He drops the paw. At once, the knocking stops. <laughs> and the door springs open. There is a pause, and then a loud wail from Mrs. White. <coughs> Beyond her, the road is empty.